Today we're talking what is the best computer for Mastercam. Uh, now when we go through this, we're going to need some sort of way to quantify these, these metrics that we're going to try and bring forward here. Uh, but again, nothing's perfect here and just, just know that a lot of the things that I bring forward in this video are going to be my personal opinion. I can be right, I can be wrong. I've been both. Uh, so stick around for this. We're going to look at a lot of different things, you know, desktop versus laptop, uh, Intel versus AMD, Quadro versus GeForce, uh, and basically everything in between. Now, before we get too far into this, we should, you know, really make note of, you know, best is a relative term. What's best for person A is not necessarily best for person B. Uh, if you do a lot of five access work versus the person that does a lot of, say, drilling, you're looking at different computers as to what would be the best. Uh, same thing if, if, if you're a student versus a multi-million dollar corporation. The, the best computer is obviously a different computer. So we'll try and keep that in mind as we go through some of these uh, tests here and performance metrics. And we'll try and keep in mind the cost of the computer as well. So in the background is a familiar file to some uh, seasoned Mastercam users. This is referred to as Benchmark 3.0. Uh, yeah, so this is 3.0. This is the third iteration of a benchmarking file uh, created by the Mastercam community. Uh, but this file is basically just looking at tool path calculation. Um, it's not looking at solid creation. It's not looking at simulation. It's not uh, looking at man manipulating models into different views. Uh, this is just a straight uh, horsepower toolpath calculation type file. Uh, that's the best we've got to go with. And I, I picked going with this file for this video just because there's so much past data uh, to compare to. Uh, I didn't want to make a new file that didn't have other files to reference. So, you know, keeping the sample size bigger as opposed to smaller. So basically what you do with this benchmark 3.0 file is you open it up, everything, all the toolpaths are already dirty. You click on read gen toolpaths and you time how long it takes. Uh, this gives you a metric on your computer's performance. Again, we're limited to toolpath calculations here and not much else, but it's still a very good uh, a base number to compare different types of systems. Uh, so for exact details on how to run this file, uh, I'll leave this to the end of the video so you can fast forward and then get the step-by-step -step on how to run this file. The file itself will also be included down in the blog post, so go ahead and click on that file, download it, uh, and get your, your numbers and compare it to the numbers that I show out here. So with that, let's hop into some numbers. So one of the reasons I'm digging into this topic now is I just recently upgraded computers. Now my old computer here was a fairly old one. It was running an Intel i7-2600, so that is a second generation i7 chip. So this came out in about 2011. Uh, so the new computer that I just upgraded to is an i9. This is the latest 10th gen chip, 32 gigs of RAM, and it's got a GeForce card. I did go with a GeForce card, a GTX 3080. Other computers I'll be testing in this one. I have a Dell laptop. Uh, this is a workstation laptop. So i7 uh, fourth generation, uh, 16 gigs of RAM. It's got a Quadro card in it, so a K1100. So that's a pretty decent card. Now this thing was brand new in 2015 and I was able to uh, rummage around the house and borrow one of the kids laptops. Uh, this is an i5 uh, third generation with only four gigs of RAM and there is no video card in this thing. So the video is running off of the CPU. As many of you know, that is not a recommended setup for Mastercam. So I'm going to show that yes, this computer will work for Mastercam. Uh, is it is it viable? Uh, I'm going to say probably not unless you're doing maybe just 2D stuff. But again, I'll show that it does work and we can at least see the limitations of a computer like that. So let's look at some numbers now. So my old computer running Mastercam 2020 took 5 minutes and 59 seconds to process the toolpath in Benchmark 3.0. So that's not bad. It's not great. It's not good, uh, but it's not too bad for a 10 year old computer. Uh, and that's with Mastercam 2020. If we switch or we upgrade to Mastercam 2021, I was seeing about a 20 second improvement in that cycle time. So that's a big deal. The only change being a different version of Mastercam. So in comparison, let's compare this, my old computer to my Dell laptop. And I only did 2021 for the laptops. I didn't want to load up every single version of Mastercam. You know, I didn't want to spend days and weeks <laughs> coming up with these numbers here. But this Dell laptop, again, it's, this is a, 20, a laptop from 2015. 
And we're seeing a similar time between this laptop and my desktop. So, so that is a good point right there. If you're looking for pure power, a desktop is the way to go. Uh, desktops, as far as heat management goes, uh, are gonna be way more efficient. Uh, besides that, you can plug them in. They're always plugged into the wall. So when you get into high performance uh, computers, you know, processing power, CPUs, GPUs, the byproduct of all this processing power is heat and the computer chips need to dissipate that heat somehow. Otherwise, the chips have a fail safe in them, which throttles their performance so that they don't create as much heat. So that the better you can deal with heat, the better the chips will perform. Just by the pure nature of the setup, a laptop cannot dissipate heat as well as a desktop. So that's an interesting number. So how about the old Lenovo laptop? It took over eight minutes to process this file. Now, you might sit there and think, well, you know, three minutes is not a big deal. Well, less than three minutes, right? Two minutes and, and 20 seconds. But that two minutes and 20 seconds is not only a very long time to sit and wait, but as you'll see in this clip, when those toolpaths are displayed on screen on, the, on this Lenovo, I can't even move the model. I can't turn the model itself with the two pals visible. And even when I scroll with the middle mouse wheel, there's lag between the input of the mouse and the movement on the screen. So even though this could calculate the toolpaths, I would say that this is unusable for this application. So let's look at the new computer. So looks like at 2020, it processed the file in three minutes and 14 seconds. And as we should, would expect a bit of an improvement with 2021, we're seeing almost three minutes flat with this computer. Now I did do some benchmarking in 2022. However, I don't think it's fair to put those numbers out yet seeing as 2022 is still in beta at this point. It hasn't even gotten to a production candidate. So I'm gonna leave off the 2022 numbers until it actually is released. So be looking at uh, mid June-ish. So that's the numbers of the computers I tested. I have some more numbers here to look at as well. So let's first hop back into Mastercam here and have a look at this multi-threading manager uh, that many of us have clicked on and wondered what the heck does this thing even do? Okay, so in here there's an exclamation mark which gets us into the settings. In here we've got an option where we can key in a value for threads and we can also set a priority for these as well. Now, in my testing, uh, I didn't see any benefit to any of the settings in here changing anything at all. Now, I only tested this on my new computer. So would this have made a difference on an old computer? That's that's to be seen. I don't, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. I also did not test these settings under multiple applications running at once, which I suspect that's probably the real use case of these. Uh, prioritizing threads uh, for Mastercam as opposed to other applications. Again, I'm only guessing here. But in my tests, as you'll see from these numbers I'm about to pull up, I didn't see any real value changes and any of the settings in here at all. So I'm gonna slide over a chart here. Now this is not as good to look at as the, uh, the bar graph was, but uh, I think it gets the point across here. So here is the, the iterations of using the different thread counts or thread uh, allocations in the multitask uh, or multi-threading manager. So 16 versus eight versus four set to high versus 20. Basically they're all within a margin of error. So uh, no difference there. Another thing I tested was if you run a newer Nvidia card, you have the option to run the studio driver or a game specific driver for the card. Now this is something I wanted to get into in part two of this, and that's talking GeForce versus Quadro, gaming driver versus studio driver. But that's the problem is there's no specific tests done on this for Mastercam. Uh, there, you can find some stuff on SolidWorks. Even the stuff I could find on SolidWorks was a couple years old. And with as far as, as uh, video cards have come in the past two years, that information is already outdated. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to make our own stuff up here. And again, more about that coming in a video too. So basically what I think these studio drivers are closer to their quadro equivalence. Now it's not a quadro card, um, it's not a quadro driver, but the studio driver is closer to a perf professional driver than a strictly gaming driver. And you're gonna see better results. And you can see them in the numbers over here. So I was seeing a small 
increase in performance with the studio driver versus the game driver with Mastercam use. I also wanted to check, you know, is there a difference between 2020 running and 2020 HLE running? Uh, again, negligible difference here. So I would say that there's no performance gain or loss in using the HLE version for processing toolpaths. Not that you can post those toolpaths in the G code anyways, but uh, performance you're seeing in HLE on a computer, you would expect the same performance on a full licensed version of Mastercam. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here is this row down here. So for me, if a computer takes two minutes less to, pro to process a toolpath, uh, that's no benefit to me at all. I'm not under the gun here to make toolpaths because the shop floor is screaming for a program. Um, some of you guys out there obviously are, but for me, I need to be able to run more than one thing at a time. When I'm doing a toolpath, I've got uh, Premiere Pro or Camtasia processing a video. I've got Spotify opening, listening to uh, some music. I've got seven Chrome browser tabs opened up with information on it and uh, emails open up and I'm emailing people. So I've got all these applications open at once. So this one here with a new computer done at a time of five minutes and 24 seconds is with five Chrome tabs open, Outlook is open, Spotify is playing uh, some music, and Camtasia was processing uh, 20 minutes worth of film footage. So there was a lot going on, but I was still able to process the toolpath here for Benchmark 3.0 faster than my old computer. So that's a, a justification for newer computers, higher performing computers is multitasking, the ability to do more than one thing at a time. Uh, so there you can see the numbers be between my the, the two laptops there. And I wanna scroll down and look at these values down here. So these are values I cherry picked from the forum. I didn't pick them all, I only picked ones where I could see the majority of the specs for the computer. And so we get an idea of what the computer is. There's a lot of numbers there where it's just people posting numbers. You don't have an idea of what the actual computer is. So I left those numbers out of it and just grabbed these ones in here. So there's a few things I want to point out. So I'd like to make note of first, the times on the right. Second, the differences in chips. We're starting to see some Ryzen's being posted here and the differences in video cards as well. So we've got the Quadros and we've got some GTX. Uh, notice the number. So here's a GTX with a good number of 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Here's a Quadro with about a 30 second faster time. Here's the same video card, 20 seconds slower. So again, we're seeing that limitation of this test file. Uh, it's really only going to test the CPU. Toolpath calculation in Mastercam is very CPU intensive. And more specifically, the faster your G or sorry, your CPU the faster it's going to process toolpaths. Now that doesn't mean that this Quadro card is useless in Mastercam because we, we are not testing anything graphically here. We're not doing simulation. We're not rotating models. We're not creating solids. Uh, so we're not really seeing the benefit of a Quadro versus a GTX in this test. I'm hoping with our part two of this and with benchmark 4.0, we can address those video related issues. So in closing, as a student, you're probably wanting more mobility. And so a laptop is the better choice, even though you will get better performance out of a desktop. As a student, you probably need to take your computing power with you wherever you're going. Uh, with that being said, you're fine with going to Best Buy and picking up basically any any laptop here. Anything will work as my test showed with my very low end laptop. It will run Mastercam. However, it runs it extremely poorly. So I would not suggest it. Again, make sure the computer has at least some sort of video card. So you can see these guys here. These do not have video cards. It's 650 bucks, uh, but there's no video card. It will probably run Mastercam. You'll probably be able to draw some wireframe geometry and do some drilling and basic 2D toolpaths, but beyond that, you're not going to be happy with the purchase. Make sure when you're sorting and searching that you do specify some sort of video card. So in this list, anything that starts with AMD, anything that starts with NVIDIA is fine. This Intel HD, that's all CPU graphics and you don't want that at all. Those outside of students and you're looking for the best computers that you can get for your money, you want bulletproof computers, I will suggest you go and shop at this place called Box. 
Uh, their computers are beyond what you buy at Best Buy, um, even though you're going to have some of them sharing some of the same components. Uh, these computers are built to industrial specifications, as in they will last and they can take some abuse. You do pay a premium, but they are worth their weight. Uh, so those looking for the best of the best, you'll shop at Box. Uh, those looking for stuff that just works, go ahead and shop at Best Buy. So in closing, I'm going to go through these steps now for running this benchmark 3.0 file. Now, if you want to run this file yourself and benchmark your own system, here's how you do. So basically open this file as is. Don't touch any of the tool paths. They're all dirty. They've got all the settings set uh, as they need to. So no adjustments are needed. The only thing you need to do to run this file is click on the regen all dirty tool paths. But before you click on that, uh, what you need to do is open up your Mastercam event log. So to do that, down in the lower right hand corner, you should have this little up arrow button. And right there is the Mastercam event log. If you right click on this, you can click on event log and that will open this log up. So just to make things a little bit easier here as you're going through this and calculating times at the end is we want to get rid of everything that's currently in here. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and just click on clear log. Once this is cleared out, once we click on the regen, that'll be the first, well, it'll be the second item in the log. And then once all the tool paths have been completed being regen, uh, there'll be a note about that as well. So what I'm going to do in here now is go ahead and click on regen all dirty operations. And when I click that, I'm going to bring my event viewer back on top here just so we can see it. So there you can see the click that's happened there to regen on all the dirty ops and the timestamp. And basically this is going to run through and as each operation gets built and completed, you'll see extra bits of code uh, left here. Basically once this is done, I will come back and I'll go through the steps on how to calculate your times for how long it took this file to actually process. Once the toolpath calculations have all been completed, uh, basically the way you can know it's done is you'll see two longer operations in here. Uh, this one won't show up exactly when the toolpath gets the green check, so maybe just wait a couple seconds to make sure this, this last op does show up. And basically what you want to do now is just calculate the time that it took between when you clicked rebuild, which is this operation right here. Let me just expand it. You can see there, regen dirty operations. That's when I click the regen dirty operations button. And then the time here when this completed is take the time difference between this and this. So sometimes subtracting and uh, adding times can be a little bit difficult. Uh, so there's this easier ways to do this. What you can do is just right click and you can save this log. This is not even a bad idea just to see how your computer is adjusting over time or comparing uh, different updates or different versions of Mastercam. So what I would I would suggest doing is saving this this log out. Obviously, you can give this thing a name that makes sense. So this is my new computer on 2021. We give this a date of say whatever. I'll just say today. Click on save. Event log saved. Okay, let's go ahead and open that log up. And it's a CSV file. So CSV means uh, common separated values. Basically, it'll open up in Excel, it'll open up in uh, Google Docs. What's the Google Docs one? Uh, uh, Sheets, Google Sheets as well. So it, you can open it up in either one. And basically in here, you can get it to do the hard work for you. So what I would do here is just make this stuff actually fit. And this is the column we're after right here. So if we just go down here and say, I want the difference between that and that. Enter. And there you can see my time is three minutes and six seconds for this process. So I again would save that and use this for now future reference. So if you do want to compare your times, I would suggest doing the same thing. Uh, save your log out, pop it up in Excel, subtract the final from when you clicked up here, and then make note of your time. And once everything's done in here, uh, word of caution, the the event viewer, you have, we just close that down, but don't, uh, don't click save on this file because it'll overwrite that dirty state that the file was in to, to do the testing with. So if you do want to save it, do a save as and save this as something that's been renamed from the original file. So that way you can always just open up that original uh, dirty Mastercam file and rebuild it just uh, and get good comparison results. So don't overwrite your saved value or your saved file and then try to make these tool paths dirty again. Uh, you'll just get inconsistent results. 
So in closing, I think to get a true idea of what the absolute best uh, bang for your buck in Mashcam is, or even the best overall computer for Mashcam, we are going to need a benchmark 4.0. We're going to need a file that incorporates everything into this test so we can test CPU, graphics, a disk drive, RAM, everything. So right now, all we can really do is judge the CPU, which is still a good, uh, a good metric. But going forward, I think we can do a bit better. We're going to need some, some help, though. I can't do this on my own. I don't have the knowledge, uh, nor do I have the time to acquire the knowledge to do so. So if you are uh, watching this video and you know something about Mastercam C hooks or net hooks, and you could help out in developing a file that would be able to do these things, and you want to help create Benchmark 4.0, let me know. Leave a comment below. And even if you just want to post your times, comment your times. Let me know what your computer is doing. And don't forget to leave your computer's specs so we can compare the computer that you've got versus the times that you're getting. So with that, let's close this up. And again, look out for part two of this video. And hopefully that part two will incorporate uh, Benchmark 4.0.